Let's turn back with another episode of Sci-Fi Mass, the weekly series that is almost weekly. Yeah, I know, I sort of missed two weeks when I only said one week, but I'm full of good excuses today. But more on that in that Rimly bit at the very end. And here's big news, the PS4 mods are coming again. We just don't know when. Again, too. But one day, the PS4 users will finally be able to experience the delight that is modding. We just still don't know when. But it'll be there, one day. Probably. Anyways, let's get to this week's mods. So in my absence, summer seems to have suddenly just disappeared. And now there's just snow everywhere around me and it's cold. At least my camo fits in now. Anyway, speaking of dressing up, at number 5 we've got Victus Tactical Armor Dash Version 2. So this mod adds in some tactical armor. To acquire it, you'll have to put on your adventure pants and uh, it's actually right here. So you just casually walk over to the rail crates and uh, go wild. So this is some pretty cool looking tactical armor and it comes in many different flavors. I went for the black variant because that is the most tactical color besides very dark tactical blue. Unfortunately that variant wasn't available. Now I even put on a Brother of Steel's officer uniform to go with the outfit but uh, it ended up poking through my app plate. So I decided to go lightweight, which uh, is a bit breezy in his weather, but the cold makes you hard. Not in that way though. Yeah, this outfit has some formidable crash protection, a decently sized butt plate, it's got grooves and a ton of colors you can choose from. You can go for plain, black, blue, gray, gold, green, red and even white. There's some glowing variants in there too, you can go for an open helmet, a closed helmet, a helmet with or without a visor or a hood. There's a ton of different options. The only problem is that the armor has some clipping issues. I mean even my rock hard, rigorously trained abs were poking through the app plate. And my abs have to stay absolutely protected. The textures for the most part do look good and overall the suit definitely looks heaps better than the styrofoam synth armor in the vanilla game. But yeah, with this great new tactical suit we can go ahead and sneak around and go for some sneaky kills. By beating people's heads in with a tire iron, like a cultured psychopath. But yeah, this mod allows you to perform one hit to animate a takedown so if you sneak up on somebody. To configure the settings you have to craft a hollow tape at a chemistry station under the utilities section. Only for some reason my hollow tape was broken. Or the cold is affecting my pitbull, either one of the two. But because of that I was stuck using blunt weaponry, which I really didn't mind all that much. I don't think I'll get tired of this mod anytime soon. Probably never. Well, now that we set a load to Preston by giving him permanent brain damage, it's time for the first shit ton of gun round. It's where I haven't made one of these videos in two weeks and I have to play catch up because a bunch of modders had to go ahead and release high quality weapon and weapon animation mods that I feel the need to just showcase here because they're really high quality. You know, I always complain about bad reloading animations. Uh, well, the modders have finally listened to me. So first up we got the right handed hunting rifle. So this mod changes the hunting rifle's bolt location from the left side of the gun to the right side. For some reason in a vanilla game the bolt is located on the left side, but no longer. So along with a change in bolt location you also get beautiful new bolt cycling animations. And when that's still not good enough you also get a brand spanking new reload animation to go along with it. Then we also get the pistol reanimation pack, which adds in new animations for pistols that use the deliverer's animations. You first off rack the slide back in a more manly manner than you used to. And then you reload the gun more tactically by using the slide release instead of racking back the slide. Overall some beautiful looking animations. Although the gun is a tad bit more in your face like you're trying to read the serial number for some reason. But it definitely does make you a lot more tactical. Next up we've got the IF-88 Tactical Shotgun Redux. Which as the name would suggest is a redux of a beautiful shotgun that was released some time ago. I never did cover this one, but it's a beefy, tactical, heavily customizable shotgun. If you put this thing on full auto and you use the box magazine, it's a very effective gun. Great for taking out John Caleb Bradbertons in quick succession. So if you think your double barrel is a tiny bit lacking, then this is a pretty decent upgrade. Then we've got another redux, it's the WH-77 Modular LSW Redux. Which I did cover some time ago, but in case you forgot, it's a beautiful and extremely customizable big fat machine gun that really allows you to hold down that trigger. Now this thing is extremely effective. I don't judge my gun's effectiveness by fire rate, DPS or FPS, I judge your gun's effectiveness by BPS, which stands for Bradperton's per minute. But I guess it'd be BPM then, but uh, anyways this gun had an exceptionally high Bradperton per minute. So it should aid you in case things get hairy. Next up we got the M4A1 saw mod along with custom M4 style rifle reload. So this is a pretty cool M4A1 saw mod, mod, 
which can now pimp out with reload animations from the Scar Age that I covered some time ago. So you can have some beautiful tactical Scar Age reload animations on your sub mod and they fit in pretty snugly. But then I noticed that some of the heads that had assembled on the floor had turned to solid ice. Which is very interesting. I mean, I knew it was cold, but not that cold. If you look closely, you can see that they're hibernating. Finally though, we've got the Doom-based LK-05 reload animation. Which is a reload animation for the LK-05 Assault Rifle. Which as in yet another beautiful reload animation for you to admire when you're in a firefight. The only thing I notice on this one is that the reload sounds are actually louder than the rifle's discharge. I guess they're just that damn tactical. Well that was the shit ton of gun round, I sure am glad we got that over with. Now we can finally get on some more guns. So at number 3 we've got the M3D OTS-02 Kiparis, which is a little Russian submachine gun. So to get your hands on this thing you have to go to the institute and head into the robotics department. Once you're in there slowly walk up to the little pond and you'll notice that the Kiparis has emerged from the goop. It is 100% organic. And by that I mean it's 100% custom. So this thing has a custom model, custom textures, custom sounds, and beautiful custom animations. We got even more tactical reload animations today. But yeah, this gun looks great too, it's not majorly customizable. You can change the receiver, go for a larger magazine, add a reflex sight, add a suppressor and a laser, and finally, you can rechamber this thing from 38 to 10mm, which means you can shoot some bigger peas. But overall this gun is stylish, it's got a nice fire rate and some low recoil. It definitely aided me in dealing with the situation that arose in the bioscience lab. I still don't know how Tinker Tom got down there. But one gun at number 3 is just not good enough, so we got two guns at number 3. The numbers here don't make any sense anymore. But at number 3 we've also got the Varmint Rifle Dash The Return. Imported straight from the Mojave, it's in Boston now too. To get your hands on this thing, you can grab one of two unique variants located at the Rotten Landfill just southeast of Sanctuary. Simply approach the landfill and exterminate the mole rats. Then pick up the rifle from the desk inside the little building. And this thing has a suppressor on it and a night vision scope, which is just perfect for when it's bright day and you've already been spotted. But you can't use this thing to kill any straggling mole rats. So yeah, these are some pretty nice looking bolt action rifles. Also, I think due to the sun's reflection on the snow, I turned black again somehow. I still don't know why that keeps happening to me. Anyways, by default, these rifles fire 556 and you cannot change that. What you can change is the receiver. You can also make the barrels short or long. You can attach a really big scope to this thing or a big magazine. And you can also add tape to the buttstock. Yes, for some reason, the Moth Author is really just a big fan of blue tape. I have no idea why, I mean I have a casual appreciation for duct tape but this author just takes it to the next level. But aside from tape you can also change the paint job to a bunch of different variants. I kept one rifle with the rat slayer paint job and put some arctic camo on a different rifle to just be one with the snow. But overall this is a good looking rifle, it's got nice custom animations and custom sounds as well. But then suddenly a bunch of wild gorillas showed up. They come out of hibernation this time of year. Now despite my expert marksmanship, taking down these gorillas turned out to be pretty difficult with these rifles. They seem to lack a bit in the firepower department. So you might just want to stick to rats when you decide to use them. But they still look pretty damn cool. Anyways, now that we've seen enough small guns, it's time for big guns. So at number 2 we've got the Wasteland Melody's Heavy Machine Gun. We are truly just checking out a shit ton of weapons this week. So to get your hands on this thing, you have to go kill one of those gorillas, then take it back to the institute and place it inside the goop pond. Then bury it below exactly 399 bottle cap mines. Then try to stand back and uh... So once you stop seeing double and your ears have stopped ringing, simply pick up the heavy machine gun from the gorilla that is still intact somehow. Now this is a big and heavy machine gun, like the name would indicate, and it fires 50 kill. It has a gigantic belt box and pretty much the only thing you can customize is how long the barrel is. You can go for short and stubby or long and lengthy. So this machine gun seemed to fend out the gorilla invasion just a tad bit better than the varmint rifle. You just never let go of the trigger. But this week we've got yet another weapon mod, it's the laser cannon dash, no it's not a Spartan laser or a Tesla cannon. So to get your hands on this thing you have to look closely into the fog. If you look close enough you can see Liberty Prime once the fog dissipates. Now you'll have to fight him in order to acquire the laser that is definitely not a Spartan laser. It's going to be the battle of the century. Oh never mind, he's already dead. 
Yeah, what a great disappointment that was. Anyways, he has a tendency of flying away, so you gotta go chase after him. Simply jump down. Now the tiny bits of bottle cap in your leg should have reinforced your shins, so you should be fine. Once you're down there, dive into the sea and find out where Liberty Prime sank to. The laser will be on his body. Once you resurface without drowning, you're ready to use the thing. Now this thing is not extremely customizable, you can change the receiver and the beam focuser, but that is about it. The textures also don't look particularly amazing, but it does have a nice and beefy sound. So I decided to put this thing up to the ultimate test, round 2 with Liberty Prime. And this time around he put up a bit more of a fight, even going so far as nuking my front entrance. But pretty soon after that I turned him into Ash. Liberty Prime is just not having a good day today, but we can rebuild him. We have the technology. It's going to be a bit more difficult since he's just a heap of ash right now, but uh, I'll get around to it one day. Anyways, now that we've got all this amazing weaponry and we've learned all these fancy tactical reload tricks, it's time to not make use of them at all, because at number one this week we've got Outfield Retreat, Dash Diamond City RV Player Home. Yeah, so last time around my tank got filled with a bunch of AN-94s, and I just couldn't sleep on top of them. The barrels kept poking me at night. It was very... uncomfortable. Fortunately this mod adds in an RV home to Diamond City. So make your way over to Diamond City and go to the very back, the RV is located right next to Travis's radio station. Sunny so outside you've got a rack on top, a little snow covered garden with some plants, a barbecue, some gnomes, a mailbox and a suit of power armor with a new Coca-Cola giving you a thumbs up. And I mean I like getting a thumbs up, it makes me feel appreciated. I think that's what they call subliminal messaging. I hope it's working. Anyways, you've also got an American flag, a power armor station around the red side, and around the left side you've got an outhouse with plants sticking through it. When you enter the RV there is a fully stacked kitchen area off on your left, with a custom coffee maker, including Eleanor's personal coffee brand. When you're done staring at the Christmas lights on top, you'll notice that there is a miniature crafting section for all your crafting needs. Moving on, there's also two creepy mannequins, a barrel with a bunch of guns, and the bedroom section. Along with a terminal and an armed bottle cap mine. You might want to be careful since we now know how unstable these things are. The bed though has a nice assortment of pillows along with a little slot plushie. And finally, you've got a bunch of shit tucked away in the cabinet. So overall this is yet another one of these neatly decorated cozy Eleonora houses. This one has a beautiful interior as well as a great looking exterior. Unfortunately though, I don't think I can live here. I just can't stand the sound of Travis talking and these walls aren't exactly soundproof. But maybe one day I'll find the perfect home for me. Or I'll become slightly less picky. Anyways, that was not it for this week's mods because we've got a number zero this week. Yes, we've had so many freaking mods the counter broke this week. So number zero, we've got Lexington Interiors. Which adds in a bunch of interiors to the town of Lexington. A whopping 26 to be exact. Now Lexington is located southeast of Sanctuary, you can also find the super duper marked here. Now there was a bunch of houses around here that were boarded up before, but now they've been opened up and given a nice interior for you to go ahead and explore. So these interiors have a lot of care put into them and they look great. Most of the houses do seem to be rather dark on the inside and filled with ghouls. So you better bring your extra big fat machine gun with you and make sure they're dead. Then just make extra sure they're dead. But yeah, this mod fits right into the Fallout world and it gives you a nice selection of interiors to explore. But that was it for the uh, top 15. I don't even know anymore, it's been so many freaking mods it may as well just be a top 100. But anyways, as always, we've also got some bonus mods in here this week, so we got even more mods. So first up we've got the Star Wars Dash the Lightsaber, which adds in a nice Star Wars lightsaber for you to slice through pretty much anything. It's got some very nice sound effects and it's got the light, it's got everything pretty much. And to go along with the lightsaber, we've got the Commonwealth Stormtroopers outfit. Which, if I remember my Star Wars correctly, is the official Jedi uniform. Definitely. But yeah, if you want a fancy new sword and that since styrofoam armor does not make you feel like enough of a stormtrooper, well then this is the kit for you. But that was finally it for this week's mods, so a lot of mods in there, a lot of good ones too. I might be back next week, I'm not entirely sure at this point, I possibly got some stuff I got to take care of. More on that too in that rambly bit that may or may not exist at the end of every episode. But until next time... So yeah, last time around I said it was going to be gone for one week, it ended up being two weeks. Now I did take the first week into account, which is why I said the one week, so I was gone to the Ardennes in Belgium. 
yeah, sometimes we go there. I don't like going there very often though, but sometimes it's bearable. But, you know, I did some fun things there. Um, I did some mountain biking, some kayaking. Uh, I froze my balls off because it turned really cold that weekend as well. So I didn't really sleep all that well, but you know, I had a good time. But the week after that, I sort of got slammed with uni work. I had to go wrap up this robot design. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm doing a minor in robotics and uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, the design got changed right before I left for that Ardennes weekend, so uh, I had some more or less catch up to do and it, it took pretty freaking long. I had to go CAD model everything. Good times, but anyways, we're gonna see whether or not that robot blows up in like two months. It's probably not gonna blow up, but we'll see, I suppose. Yeah, it's exciting, right? But yeah, that's the reason why there was no Top Mass video. And as to whether or not there's gonna be one next week, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I gotta go do this midterm pretty soon-ish. It's a Java programming midterm, and I haven't really done too much coursework on a Java programming. I'm kind of a Java programming noob at this point. So I might have some catch-up to do on that one too, and uh, not entirely sure how long that's going to take, so I'm keeping that one open. I might be here next week, I might not be. We will see, I suppose. In other news though, I finally received my silver play button, and I actually unboxed that thing, I recorded that, so I gotta go create that video too. It'll be out someday, I guess, this week probably. Uh, we'll see. But I think those were the updates, so uh, yeah. Go watch the video in the bottom left corner, and remember to click that like button. Like I already subliminally told you to do, actually. So if you haven't done it at this point, I'm just straight up telling you to do it now. And uh, until next time.